Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's Word and Wonder service as we continue our Building Better Relationships series. It's going to be an amazing time this evening. Um, but before we start, let's open in prayer. Hallelujah. Where you are, why not just begin to thank the Lord for what he has done in our lives today. He has sustained us. He has given us grace. He has been with us. He has given us new mercies because his mercies are new every day. <clears throat> Father, Lord, we thank you this evening. We give you glory and honor and praise. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done in our lives today. We don't take it for granted. We say thank you, Lord. And why not ask the Holy Spirit to come and have his way this evening? It's so easy to be distracted. It's so easy to be, to be absorbed with the cares of the world. But let's pray that this evening that we will be able to focus, that we will not be distracted, that the Holy Spirit himself will come and teach us this evening. Where you are, just pray that the Holy Spirit himself will come and teach you this evening, that your heart will be open, that your heart will be good soil, ready to receive his word this evening. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We welcome you as our teacher this evening. We ask, O oh Lord, that you yourself come and teach us. Prepare our hearts ready to receive your word, O oh Lord. And why not take a moment as well this evening to ask that, that the Lord will help you to put into practice whatever you learn this evening. It's, it's one thing to hear information, but it's another thing to have the, the wisdom to correctly apply the knowledge. Let's ask that the Lord will give us wisdom, that the Lord will give us the ability, the skills to be able to put everything he's teaching us into practice in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, as we go into time of praise and worship, we ask, O oh Lord, that as we lift you up, that you would draw us near to yourself. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Let's go into a time of praise and worship, and I'll see you on the other side.
Just let me hear your hands. Come on. Just lift your voice and bless the name of Jesus this morning. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, 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 Jesus. Thank you for your, presence, Thank you for your love. Lord, we bless you. How can I describe Oh God has indescribable How can I explain I love that so unexplainable
falling off. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we worship you. We thank you because of who you are. We thank you, Lord, because of your might, your power, your everlasting love. We give you praise, O oh Lord. We thank you, O oh Lord, for what a wonderful time in your presence just now. We give you praise, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask once more that you come and help us this evening. Come and teach us yourself. Give us understanding of your word. Thank you, Father. Let your word tonight bring refreshment to our soul, to our marriages, to our relationships. Give us direction in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Good evening, everyone. If you've just joined us, good evening. Hallelujah. We bless um, everyone in the name of the Lord. We are so happy that you joined. Um, if this evening is your first time ever coming across um, this channel, we welcome you specially. And I know that there'll be um, a form that pops up in the chat that you can complete and we'll be in touch with you. If it's the first time you've connected with us, why not consider subscribing so that you always know when uh, we come up uh, live. Um, this evening we are, um, it's our Bible study, but it's part of our Building Better Relationship series. Um, this is actually the fifth um, session this evening of the series. So, you know, number one, we had what is marriage. Number two was uniqueness and difference in marriage. Number three was love as a basis of marriage. Number four, what do you expect from marriage? So for the first three, you can see them under the live tab on the channel. For the fourth one, it's not under the live um section so you need to go to just the videos um you know and you will see it there 
about the third one down or so. So do catch up with the whole series. If um, you're only seeing this one, go back and it will all uh, make your relationships better in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So it's, um, it's April, it's the month of April and that's what we do in the month of April. So share the, the links with people. Let as many people as possible be blessed in this season because a lot of people are struggling in their relationships they there there's a lot of fear around the topic of marriage those that are not yet married sometimes are quite afraid about getting into it and you know how do i make the right choice how do i know my marriage is going to be successful how do i know it's not going to break down you know and there's no need for fear um when it comes to marriage if we do it god's way and that's what we're here to help you to do you're already married so, so many marriages are going through um troubles storms tribulations confusion not really knowing how it got so wrong and how to make it better so this season is for you whether you are single whether you are married this entire series is here to be a blessing to you and all those around you so share it with others so this evening i said we are going to be looking at the topic um, this is the fifth in the series and the topic is setting goals in marriage, making a vision statement. So setting goals in marriage and the subtitle, making a vision statement. So what are we talking about this evening? Well, what we are saying is that, you know, without, um, without a clear vision of where you are going, it's difficult to, um, you know, to know how to navigate your way just with anything. Um, it is good for you to have a, a vision in life um, and a vision for your marriage. Definitely, we need to write down the vision and make it plain, as we are told in the book of Habakkuk. So what is a, a good way to develop goals is to establish a vision statement. So that's what we're going to be leading you through this evening. So what is vision? Well, vision could be described as foresight. Um, with the significance of possessing a keen awareness of current circumstances and possibilities and of the value of learning from the past. That is one definition. I'm all about definitions. So that is a definition of um, how you can, uh, of what vision is. It is foresight with the significance of possessing a keen awareness of current where you are currently and the possibilities and values of learning from the past and then looking forward. So it takes into account the present, um, where you're coming from, and where you are going to. Vision can also be described as seeing the invisible and making it visible. So seeing the invisible and making it visible. It's having a picture in your mind of the way things could or should be in the days ahead. Um, so that is, is that what are the possibilities going forward? what what could what could be so if you have never sat down to think about okay this is where we have come from this is where we are and this is where we are going i always say that it's very important to be intentional i'm just going to get that scripture for you that um talks about um vision just one second that's um yes that's not the one i'm looking for um, that talks about, someone can help me put it in the chat, where the scripture that talks about writing down the vision and making it plain. One second, I'll get it for you because, you know, we need to have the word. <laughs> we can't just talk uh, without having the word. And um, what I had written down is not the, the correct one. Um, yes, so it is Habakkuk 2. Yes, Habakkuk 2 verse 2. It says, and the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he that readeth it may run over it. So write the vision. So I'm talking about how it is necessary to be intentional and write down the vision. I don't know if you've ever thought about it that, you know, this question, what is the vision I have? If you're not yet married, have you thought about you know, maybe you are in the season of courtship. Have you thought about what is the vision that we have? Or if you're married, have you ever sat down and thought about what is the vision? So I've said vision is taking into account the past and the current circumstance and going into the future. It's seeing the invisible and making it visible. It's having a picture in your mind, as the scripture said, about writing it down, making it plain. Having a picture in your mind 
um, of the way things could or should be in the days ahead. Um, vision is a, is a portrait of conditions that don't yet exist. It's focusing on the future. So yes, you consider where you're at currently, you consider where you're coming from, but you are looking into the future. You know, so wherever, even if, you know, you've been married for 20 years, the, you don't get stuck in that, okay, we, where we have been. You are looking forward. What are we going to be doing? What is the vision we have? What are the goals we have for going forward? This is a very important part to make our relationships better. So vision is the process of creating a better future with God's empowerment and direction. So no matter where you're at right now, it is possible to be better and why do we need to seek god's direction because without his wisdom you know what we achieve might be outside of his will we how do we know that we are going in the direction that god wants for us to go in if we don't look out for his um, direction we've already talked in this series about how god has designed every person every individual for a unique purpose so we, we had a session on the uniqueness um, and difference of each person in a marriage. So God has create, uniquely created you as an individual with a specific purpose. But if we are married, then that is has to also be incorporated into that purpose. So you have your individual goals and purposes, but there's a reason why God is bringing two people together in marriage to help each other accomplish the goals, but also to have your um, combined purpose. And we need to, there's something that we in our marriage should accomplish that's important for the kingdom of God. But, you know, when, when we talk about <coughs> purpose, you know, some people are waiting for, you know, this um, one distinct, you know, purpose, you know, just to have a direct voice from heaven say, you know, in a booming voice, this is your purpose. But it doesn't happen like that. You know, most times we don't just hear it like that in simple terms. This is the one purpose, you know. And God speaks straight from heaven. So it normally comes in steps. So in order to sit down and make the vision plain, we need to think about what steps we go through. Because if I say to everyone watching now, you know, try and just, just give me now, just write it in the chat, what is the vision for your marriage? It, it's, it's a big question um, and a difficult one at that without actually sitting down and breaking it down into um, portions. It's, it, it, it's, it, there's a need to ask God, why did you put us together and let him reveal it bit by bit? And Pastor and I, you know, just celebrated our 19th wedding anniversary yesterday. And at 19 years of marriage, we are still, you know, working it out day by day. What are our goals? What is the vision? What is the purpose? Because it, it continues to grow from one dimension to another. So, whether you are yet to get started on the marriage journey, you are about to be on the marriage journey, or you've been there for some years, it's still the same. It, we have to be intentional in working out our vision. So again, why is a vision so important? Um, why are we talking about this? Why is this important in order for us to build better relationships? Well, there are five reasons I want to mention. So remember I gave you, a, was it a one to three um, definitions of vision? Now we're looking at five reasons why it's important. Number one is clarity. It, it's understanding why God put you together with your spouse. It's impossible to know if you're successful if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish. So how do you define success in your marriage? Is it just because you're not fighting? Is it because you're happy? You know, or what is it that, what, how do you have clarity about whether your relationship is successful or not? If you don't know what you are trying to accomplish in the first place, what is your goal? Is it just to be happy? Um, confusion is the opposite of clarity. God never creates anything to operate in confusion. He is not a God of confusion. He's a God of order. And so he wants, and he wants to operate in the light. So he'll speak to us and give us clarity. So we need vision because we need clarity. All right. The Bible also says in the book of Hosea chapter four, verse six, that people perish because of lack of knowledge. We don't want our marriage to perish because of a lack of knowledge. We need clarity. Number two, um, when you have vision, it gives you an energy and a passion to accomplish that vision. If you don't know what the vision for your life and your marriage is, it's hard to get excited about it. Then what are we doing? What are we getting up for? Um, if there is no 
um, passion. But once you identify a vision, both of you will pursue it with great energy. And when God gives a desire to us, he always gives us the ability to accomplish it um, and, the, and the desire. You know, for Pastor and I, we, we love what we do. We, we wake up every morning, you know, excited about using our skills and talents to help others. You know, um, when you talk about what we do, you know, the, the admin side of things, those are things that, you know, you just have to do. But when it comes to actually working with people, you know, mentoring, discipling, encouraging, those are things that give us so much joy. And the fact that we are doing it together um, is amazing. So that, you know, we pursue it with so much energy. Sometimes people tell us, rest. <laughs> we don't know how to rest because... We are pursuing the goals and the purpose and the mission and the vision that he's put before us. So, so number two was when you have vision, it gives you energy and passion. Number three is um, purity. When you have a vision, you'll be surprised, maybe surprised to know, it actually will keep you out of sin. Um, it's, it's when you are idle, when you don't have a plan, when you don't know where you're headed, <clears throat> you can fall into sin. Um, people without vision of vulnerable to negative guidance so rather than living your life you know struggling just struggling not to do anything wrong um, with a vision you'll be living to do the right thing and that's a huge difference trying not to do the wrong thing versus living doing the right thing and enjoying your life then the fourth one is unity couples fight because they don't see eye to eye um, because they have competing visions if you don't sit down together to work out what is your vision as a family as a couple then you may be competing with one another that's what the word division means it's competing visions two different visions division two different visions going the opposite direction we know that um, Amos chapter 3 verse 3 tells us that we cannot work together unless we are in agreement um, you know, when, when you talk about a body, um, your, your head cannot go in a different direction to your feet. You know, you have to be going in the same direction. Otherwise, there's confusion. So the, a vision together, setting goals together, will give you um, unity. It's impossible to succeed in marriage when a husband and wife are divided. The Bible tells us that, you know, um, again, like I've just said, who two cannot work together except they are agreed. Another scripture will tell us that a house divided against itself cannot stand. So rather than both of you looking your own way, um, you have to have a, a single vision. Doesn't mean we've talked about already uniqueness and difference in marriage. It doesn't mean that you have to give up your goals. We'll talk more about that in a minute. But it, it does mean that you should have the same focus as you're going along. The fifth one is victory. When you have um, a vision, then there will be victory. Proverbs 29 verse 18, it says, where there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, which, you know, talks about the what we said a minute ago about if there's no vision, you can fall into sin because there's no focus. As a, as a church in Chapel of Grace Bradford, our theme for the year is focus. Um, so focus, there needs to be revelation, there needs to be knowledge, understanding that you can focus, a vision that you can focus on. Um, when there is no revelation, people cast off restraint, but blessed is the one who heeds wisdom's instructions. So you'll be blessed when you have revelation about your vision, you write it down, you make it plain, you set smaller goals to achieve it, you will be blessed, you will have victory. Um, there, it's like, if you, if you don't have a vision, it's like a runner in a race who doesn't know where the finish line is. How will, you, how will anybody win if they don't know where the finish line is? So if you don't know what you're trying to accomplish or achieve, then how will you know whether you have won or not? And that's why people are surprised that one day their relationship has just broken down and they are wondering, what happened? How did this happen? Because you didn't know what you were trying to accomplish. You didn't set, sit down and write it out. So we always talk with couples before getting married that there's so much work that you need to do. Getting married is not just I love you, I love you, and we have a lavish wedding, and you know we just go along, we enjoy life, we have children, and it just works. No, there's so much work that goes into it. That's why 
we talk about uncommon marriage. Marriage, not just the way the world thinks of marriage, but uncommon marriage. Understanding that it's a covenant, understanding that it's God that gives the vision and how we can need to work it out um, as a couple. So if you're ready to do that work, your marriage is going to be successful and it's going to be better and better. So the significant then first step from everything we've said, is choosing the direction that you are going. Um, there's a book called Keep Your Love On by Danny Silk. And it makes the point that we subconsciously or sometimes consciously choose one of two directions for our marriage. Number one is distance and safety. Number two is connection and closeness. So these are two directions. One is you know, um, yes, we're married, but emotionally, I'm still keeping my distance so that I can be safe. So I actually don't want to reveal to you what my plans are, what my goals are, you know, where I'm headed, um, you know, because I don't I don't really know you yet. We've, we've just, you know, gotten married or couples choose to have connection and closeness and there's intimacy. We are talking, we are planning, we are, you know, sharing every part of life with one another. That is something that, you know, when people will ask me. What has made your marriage to have worked for 19 years? Now, don't get me wrong. There are people that are married 30 years, 50 years. My parents are about celebrating this month also. And, you know, they're over 50 years in marriage. So my 19 years looks small. <laughs> but in the little that I know, if, I, if you ask me personally, what has helped your marriage to succeed? I will say it is openness. It is transparency. It's that ability to share everything with one another and not keep something behind, not be guarded, but to just share um, everything with the other person. So, you know, when, you, so the direction we are going, are we going to be keeping things to ourselves? Are we going to be sharing everything with, um, with one another? Now, if you choose closeness, um, it, yes, it opens yourself up to be vulnerable, to sometimes experience pain um, and so on, um, because you're going to step on each other's sore spots the closer you are together. But it also provides us with the best environment to discover our God-given purpose and vision um, for the future. The message version of that Proverbs 29 verse 8, it says, If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what he reveals, they are most blessed. Wow. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. So without vision, that was without vision that people cast off restraint. This one says, if you can't see what God is doing, you will stumble all over yourselves. Wow. So um, it's clear then if we have a vision and a direction for our marriage, even decision making will be easier. As decisions arise, we'll be able to ask us ourselves, do the options that are before us, so jobs come up, you know, different different opportunities come up. You'll be able to ask yourself, do these options, which of these options line up with our vision as a couple? We can only fit so many things into our time, into our schedule. So uh, if we are filling our time with things that God has called us to leave alone, then we'll become stressed and anxious. But if we make the focus something he's called us to, then he will equip us to do it. And, and there's another book, you know, you need to read a lot um, to have a successful marriage. And another book, The Story of Marriage, The Story of Marriage, John and Lisa Bevere, um, talk about the importance of starting with the end in mind. So that, that is to have a clear and focused direction on the goals that we, we set. So the idea of that is that you, you think and pray about the legacy you want to leave when you are no longer on the earth. You say, wow, so I've not even married or I've just married and I should be thinking about when I die. But it's just about what legacy do you want to leave behind? What would you want the world to know you for? Um, when Because you have to have the end in mind. Um, yes, raising godly, healthy children um, that are still in the Lord is an important aspect of vision, but there's more. And there's a bigger legacy that you can leave behind than only having no, I don't say only, than having successful children. God has put you together as a couple because there's something that you can do better together. How can you do that in a way that is uniquely to you? Um, do you feel called to impact families in your community? Um, 
your local community, your church, you know, how could you both um, function in your church, in maybe in your neighborhood, having a house fellowship? What, you know, what, what is it you could do? Is it um, overseas missions? Is it, you know, an NGO together? Is it um, a particular part of the business community? No one said you need to be pastors in order to have an impact in your world. So what you, you know, you, you are both in the kingdom. So what can you do together to further the kingdom? It will affect how you spend your finances. Um, it will affect how you spend your time. If both of you have a common vision, what has God put on your heart to achieve together? Have you talked about these things? Um, it's important. So what could go into your vision statement? You can put down um, you know, what you want to achieve in key areas. Um, we could talk about financial budgeting, investing, saving, giving, um, household aspects, you know, who's doing what around the house, um, your physical needs, um, who's, uh, how are you exercising, what is your diet going to be made up of, um, social aspect of life, your friendships, the time you're going to spend together versus the time you're going to spend apart, your, the spiritual life is your church commitment, your devotional time, your family altar, your prayer times. Um, how are you going to better your marriage through attending conferences? Which books are you going to buy? Which courses are you going to attend? Your family, how are you going to take care of your children, your extended family, your parents, or, or your, you know, your, your family members? And then also your marriage relationship and times, how are you going to communicate together? What promises are you making to each other about that? How are you going to be intimate? And all of these things. So these are all things that you can put into your vision statement. And then you have a checkup once a year. It can be at the end of the year if that's easiest or any time of the year. It could be on your wedding anniversary or the end of the year. When you sit down and say, okay, this was the vision statement. These were the things that we said we wanted to do. We wanted to achieve. And this is how we were going to achieve them. And, you know, have a checkup and see where you are at. So then how do you set goals? Because we now have a big vision, all these things that we have, it, we want to do, the direction we are going. But except you break them down into goals, it's going to be quite difficult for you to achieve these things. So how do you set goals? Of course, very popular um, acronym that we know is SMART. S-M-A-R-T. Um, SMART goals. And SMART goals redefines the way you set goals. It's not about, you know, the long term. It's about what can you do right away. Um, so, for example, like I mentioned earlier, what do you expect from your marriage? What, what, what is the vision for your marriage? Is it just to be happy? So if you just say, I want to be happy in my marriage, and that's all you have, well, how do you measure that happiness? How do you know when, when you're happy, when you're not? What does it look like? Um, and, you know, so... What does that even mean? Well, if you set smart goals, bigger, you know, of how you can be happy in marriage, that will be better. So smart stands for specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. So what does each one mean? So we're going to look at what each of these mean and then some practical examples, and then we will close today. So the primary purpose of a specific goal is to answer the W questions. What so who, what, when, where, why? So this goal that we have, um, who does it apply to? What, ha what, what is it? When is it going to happen? Where is it going to happen? Why? You know, so all the W questions. And that will help you to realize what you have to do to make the goal happen. Be specific. Be very specific. A vision statement should have specific goals. Vague goals equals vague results. So it has to be very specific goals, measurable goals. Uh, what's important is that you can follow a plan and track your progress along the way. And I'll give you some examples of how this applies in marriage in a minute. Measurable goals answer how, how much, how many, how often, all right? Um, a is attainable. Setting attainable goals is crucial to actually helping you to complete them. There's nothing, there's no point in setting something as a goal that is, is just not going to be possible um, at this time. You can look at it again later, but set attainable goals um, so you don't get discouraged. If you have a, a much higher chance of feeling frustrated and giving up, then that means it's too difficult 
to attain. So set, instead of setting one big goal, um, you know, we want to save £5,000 a month when you're just on minimum wage salary. It's not an attainable goal. So set five smaller objectives of how you could get um, started with something. Are we going to save £100 a month? You know, um, work your way up. Um, now, um, R is relevant. How relevant is this goal that you want to achieve? You don't want to invest time and effort into things that are not even relevant. So, you know, you might have heard somebody else um, have a very good goal for them, but it's not relevant to you. So there's there's no point in even doing that. And then T is for time bound. Deadlines create a sense of urgency. I mean, we could ask ourselves the question, would we have ever written that assignment if it wasn't due on a particular date? Would we have ever read that book or those articles if um, we didn't have an exam on a certain date? So, you know, goals always have to be time bound. You have to set a deadline. You just can't say, okay, in the whole lifetime of our marriage, this is our goal. You know, that's, that was your vision statement. But now we are breaking your vision statement down into achievable goals and they have to be time bound. Um, so you have to um, set a deadline, no matter how big or how small. What, why are we talking about smart goals for marriage? Aren't smart goals in, in, you know, relevant in the business world, in the corporate world? Why are we talking about in marriage? Because there are a few things in life that require more tolerance and understanding than marriage. If we can have smart goals for um, our professional life, why should we not have smart goals for our marital life? It's because... The reason marriages fail is because we don't do these types of things. We just take life, come, come easy, go easy. <laughs> and then it falls apart. Ours will not fall apart in Jesus' name. So um, there's a lot of compromises that need to be made. And SMART goals help us to take the steps that are needed. Um, so if you want to strengthen the bonds between you and you might not know where to start, setting SMART goals can make a difference. So I said I'd give you some examples. We're being very practical this evening. Um, that's just how I am, you know. I love, I love the word, and I, you know, I can quote, um, read ten thousand scriptures, and, you know. But this evening, I just want to um, really get down to the practical, and that's why we are just being very practical because I want you after this to be able to take pen and paper and actually do this. Don't just listen to it and say, "Oh, that was nice." You, it won't work for you if you don't put this into practice. Remember I said, whichever stage you're at, if you are, you know, marriage is not on your horizon yet, you're single and you're not thinking about getting married, then, you know, still study more on this so that when you get to there, you'll be ready. If you are um, in a period of courtship heading towards marriage, then this is for you too. And, you know, you've already got to the person you can be discussing and talking on these things already and praying on them and studying on them. You are married. It doesn't matter where you are at on your marriage. It's never too late to start again. Um, so even if it's 20 years, you can still today take pen and paper. We're going to, you know, rewind this. We're going to replay it after it's finished. That's why it's good. It's, it's on online. We're going to, you know, uh, maybe your spouse is not watching with you. Oh, we're, we're, we're going to go through this again. And we're going to take pen and paper and we're going to do this. It will really be of benefit to you. So some examples, and then we'll round up this evening. So let me give you some examples of how SMART goals. So I'll give you, like, I, I had 11 written down. I don't know if we'll do 11 because of the time. Um, but, you know, the what the goal is and how you break it down into SMART goals, all right? So number one, let's say the goal is that um, to recharge from my daily stresses and be a better spouse, I'll schedule half an hour of alone time and I will do this two times per week for two months. So this is where maybe together you have understood that, um, you know, one of you is very stressed or because of work or something, because of the busyness of life. And, you know, so the goal is to, you know, to better your relationship. And you personally have said, um, I'll schedule half an hour of alone time. You notice I'm starting with one that is an individual response. We'll get to joint ones later. But it's very important that you don't always say it's the other person. See, the, the other person needs to do this for our goals to work. What can you yourself do? Think about what you yourself can do. So um, let's look at SMART. So specific. This is a specific goal. It states precisely what, when, and why you want to accomplish it. 
you know, it was to be a better spouse, understanding that I'm stressed, I'm not being the spouse I could be. So I'm going to schedule half an hour of a known time two times a week for two months. So it says to schedule two sessions per week, making it easy to gauge your progress. Half an hour is not that much time to spend alone, but it can have a significant impact. You can always adjust the time. They, they, um, are, the, the goal is to recharge from stresses to be a better spouse and spending time alone is essential, so it's relevant. Then time bound, two sessions per week means there should be no postponing or rescheduling and then you can reassess it after two months. So it was, it was, smart, it was a smart goal. So the, the second one, you know, we need to encourage one another. So your goal could be over the next month, we will encourage each other on our work or life related projects every day to help motivate each other to pursue our dreams. In addition, we will speak in a supportive tone, listening to their, to our concerns with empathy, showing that we care, right? It's a smart goal. Everything is about it is specific. The W questions are all answered. It's measurable because it's the number of days you will perform tasks, give advice. It's, it, it was measurable. There's nothing unachievable about supporting your spouse in what matters to them. It was relevant because the goal was to strengthen your marriage and in, do, in so doing, it's, it, it's impossible to strengthen your marriage without supporting one another. So it's relevant. It was time bound. You said you'll do this every day for one month, after which time you can extend it or adapt it. Okay, two examples so far. Number three, to organize time alone together. And you could call it date nights. You can call it whatever name you want to, but it's to spend time together um, alone. So the goal will could be stated this way: to strengthen our bond over the next twelve months, uh, we will organize two date nights per month for uh, us at a location we both love. This goal is specific; <coughs> it answers the questions: who, what, when, where, and why. It's measurable: two date nights per month over one year lets you measure your goal progress every month, and the date night should add up to twenty four in the year. Um, you can, if you have to skip one, um, you can always make it up, but you know that the total should have been 24. Um, the goal is achievable. Um, it, just two hours, two times a month is not impossible. It shouldn't be. Um, it's relevant and it's time bound. Um, let's look at another one. Um, to show gratitude, to express our appreciation over the next month, um, we will each tell uh, we will tell our spouse one thing they did for us that we are thankful for each day. So only one thing every day. You can tell your spouse one thing every day that they did for me that you're thankful for. Again, it's specific. It's measurable that you have one thing every day to say. Um, even if you can't think of something specific that they did, you can mention something they, they did in the past. If you can't think of something that day, but you have to say one thing every day can be a simple thing, the way they comforted you, the dinner they made, whatever it is. It will, it's relevant because it will strengthen your marriage by showing appreciation and working on a goal once a day for 30 days is a great way to make it timely. Um, let me go down to, like I said, I can't do every one of these 11 ones I've put down here. You can think of your own. Love languages. Um, the goal could be, I will make an effort to, or we will make an effort to observe each other this week and discover our love languages. <coughs> Starting next week, I will do one small thing a day that uses that knowledge so that my partner feels my love. So only one thing you are going to do every day that is in line with the love language. So it started off with, okay, I don't know what love languages are. We need to go read about it. I don't know what my partner's love language is. We need to find out. And then once I have all that information, I'll do one thing per day. Again, you can see how that is a smart goal. Working on financial independence. During the last week of this month, we will sit down together and work on a budget for the household and how we are going to achieve it and stick to it. Again, it's a smart goal. Communicate, effect, open and effectively. This is a good one. Let's set the goal. We both tend to shut down when angry or sad. And this creates problems. Start, starting next month, we will read a book on communication together so we can learn how to communicate with each other. 
again it's you know set a goal we will when you will finish that book um and so on so these are examples of um smart goals that you can set that will help you to achieve that bigger vision that you have set down for each other when you are setting these goals i don't want to just leave now without making mention of this when you are setting goals make sure that you are positive when you are wording them so don't say well since my since you don't like it when i do x y z i'll do it this way then <laughs> you can see the tone um, you can see there that you are putting blame. Okay, this, this is only an issue because you think it's an issue. So since you think it's an issue, let's let's do this. Um, it, it means don't put the blame on the other person. Acknowledge your responsibility and how setting the goal will make a difference in in the you know, put the problem, whatever problem you you foresee or whatever problem you are seeing, and um, put it on an external chair and think about how you both can work together to make that problem um, better and more constructive and then word a goal that will be positive. So whether, like I said, whether you are, if you're, you're single right now, you're not yet married, talking, still talking about life goals and priorities is important and it's important to do it early. It's, it's you know, the, the reality is it is easier to break courtship than marriage. So if you are in courtship right now and you've not thought about any of this, what, what you know, what are my goals? What are, what's my vision? You've not shared that with your soon-to-be spouse and found out whether it's something that can work together, then that's a problem. You need to do that ASAP. And because if you when you talk about career goals, family values, financial priorities in a relationship, you will get to understand whether it's going to work for you. What if one of you wants a large family, but the other one doesn't. One ha has a career that moves around often and the other one wants to put down roots. And then a tough conversation is going to need to happen, whether you'll be able to find a way to align together before it goes further. For married couples, know that your goals and priorities will be different at 50 than when you are 20. So don't be rigid that, you know, it must stay the same. You will, it will change. Life is dynamic. Life needs to be flexible. Give yourself and your spouse permission to grow and change. Treat your spouse with kindness and encouragement if they change their goals, even if it might cause conflict. Remember, they will support you when you want to make changes as well. So when tough decisions need to be made, it can be helpful to view the solution as you both can work towards your goals and you just have to be creative about how to make it work sometimes we approach big decisions like it's either it's only one of us that can reach our goals so the other one has to give something up not necessarily this about give and take there'll be a time to make um, both of you be able to reach your your goals um so the most important thing is just be invested in each other's dreams incorporate them into a joint vision and step by step, set smart goals to make sure that you can achieve them. And, you know, know that you will find joy in each other's joy. Um, so that is what I wanted to share this evening with us. Remember that we continue this series again on Sunday. Um, it will be another uh, wonderful session in our Building Better Relationships series. And if you put all these things into practice that have been in five sessions now, I can tell you with the utmost confidence that it doesn't matter what state your marriage is in, it's going to be better. And I can promise you that if you put all these five sections into practice, um, you're in courtship now, and you put all these things into practice as you're going into marriage, there's no need for fear because your marriage is going to be very wonderful and very beautiful. It's literally just about doing the work and our marriages will get better and better in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray this evening. Father, we thank you for this study today. Thank you, Lord, that you have set out in your word a system that should work for each and every one of us. And that is to write down the vision and make it plain. You have told us this evening that we must not lack knowledge, that we need revelation. Because those who don't have revelation or direction will cast off restraints, will stumble over one another. You have said it in your word, Lord, and when we have practicalized it, we thank you, Lord, for the insights received from you this evening. We ask, oh Lord, for each and every one of us that have joined this live or will watch it later, that you will help us to 
to appropriate this word into the into whatever makes it relevant to us that we will be doers and not just hearers of your word we ask lord that no matter how desperate our situation seems to be that you will help us to find a way to put this into practice it may be lord that some of us are in marriages where it's yes we are hearing this but our spouse is not on board at all, doesn't want to put in the effort. We pray, oh Lord, that you would intervene in that situation, that by your spirit, you would um, continue to speak to that spouse who is not wanting to get on board in order to make their marriage work and be better. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen anyone in such a situation, that you'll give them your grace to enable them to make changes anyway, in, even in their own life, knowing that the other, you will work on them. For those who are embarking on their marriage journey that are in courtship right now, we pray, O oh Lord, as they work through these issues, that you will guide and direct them. For those, O oh Lord, who are saying, well, my marriage is working well, we ask, Lord, that you will make it even better and sweeter. For those, O oh Lord, who are midway, well, yes, my marriage is good, but there are things I need to improve. I hadn't heard about all this before. Lord, meet them at the point of their need. Help them to put all these things into action. At the end of this, Lord, let there be great and wonderful testimonies of great things that we have achieved because of the visions and the goals that we've put in place. Thank you, Father. We thank you for all that you are doing in our lives in this season um, of our lives and for this information to be coming to us in this season. We thank you, Lord, and we give you praise and glory. We ask, oh Lord, that even as we give now, um, as we give of our tithes and our offerings, that, Lord, you will bless our giving and, Lord, you will multiply it for the furtherance of your gospel and your kingdom. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, yes, you can give your tithes and offerings. Go to chapelofgrace.org.uk forward slash donations or using the giving um, details on the screen. You can give of your tithes and offerings and I know that you will never give in vain. Um, because God is always faithful. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's it for this evening. Thank you so much for joining today. Um, take note of the books that we recommended um, and, you know, pick them up and, you know, do the work and God will increase his grace upon your life as you do the work. He will pour out himself upon you and your marriage and your relationships in Jesus' name. So until we see you again, God bless. Bye-bye.